So we get a little break on the price there. For our viewers, can you name them as you go down the list? I guess so. Um, <laughs> we have the you L did there. <laughs> did you, I see what you did there. They're, they're very um, ethnic names, should we say? Uh, very. Uh, I can't pronounce how. <laughs> You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. And scene. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of The Cigar Guys. Uh, welcome back, everyone. How was PCA? You guys had a good time? Fantastic time. This is episode 64, if I'm not mistaken. We are back in action. 69 is going to be huge. <laughs> Stay tuned. Only four more episodes. Oh, man. But we are uh, going to share some highlights from PCA, new cigars, brand updates, and stuff like that. We're going to go through each brand, what was you know the biggest thing they released, uh, and then we're going to talk about it. Um, obviously, not going to go through everything because there's quite a lot, but we're going to go through about 10 to 12 brands that kind of stuck out to us and then go from there yeah it was but, perfect uh, yeah, the, yeah pca was perfect would you say it was perfecto i would say that actually mm. oh, and speaking of that why did you have something to say yeah, i was actually just about to say something oh, were you about no. to say something well, i was about a perfecto all right all right, all right. let's say one brand all right three two one patron <laughs> wow that's crazy that's crazy are you sure we're not twins <clears throat> that's crazy. before get we get into crazy. your comment that was very fantastic by the way i love that uh what's everyone smoking right now I am smoking the 1102 House Blend Maduro. I don't know. Correct. Yeah. It is a Maduro. He was like looking at me. I don't know. Um, anyway, I'm smoking the 1102 House Blend. Goes. I'm smoking the 1102 House Blend Maduro. It's fantastic. Make sure to check it out at 1102cigars.com. 1102cigars.com. Jared? Personally, I like using BasisCigars.com. It's a little easier to type for me. Well, without the S, Basis Cigar. Actually, we have both of them. Oh, BasisCigars.com. You should know that. <laughs> Zach is, at this point, a contributor. I am smoking the 1102 Basis Cigar. And that's okay. it. Yeah. Uh, ditto. Nice. I'm well, smoking. Uh, 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 Alex, are you? What? Is that, is that, is that, that, is that fake? That's a no, fake Cohiba. It's not. It's no, a, that's a fake Cohiba. That, look at the yeah, wrapper. Look, at that. look, count the dots. It's this, like a carbon copy of a Cohiba. <laughs> really? Yeah. It literally. Look. Look. Yeah. Look. Yeah. That's. Yeah. You're covering my face in the camera. I'm glad it doesn't focus because I, I actually got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to figure that out. Uh, autofocus or something. But anyway, um, I'm smoking a authentic Cohiba. <laughs> it's actually not. You could probably tell from here. It's uh. It's actually a legit brand called Carbon Copy. They make copies of different brands. Uh, Cohiba is probably the most popular. They have like Padron copies. Um, it's a quick story about this. I posted this in uh, all the cigar Facebook groups. You know how the, they get. Um, I posted, I said, you know, smoking a Cohiba. Um, do you guys think this is real? Like, let me know, something like that. And 30% of the comments got the joke. It says Carbon Copy, Republica Dominica. Uh, so they were going along with it. 30% of the comments were genuinely like, no, it's not real. Um, you know, it's okay. Don't feel bad. Like, we, we've all done it. Like, we've all fallen for it. And then the other 30% were like, you dumbass. Pretty much. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. It was fun. Oh, it was how, really fun. How could you even buy a car that looks like that? It's obviously not Cuban. The craftsmanship of the label. I'm not watching your podcast anymore. There's no holograms on the label. That's how I knew it was fake. <coughs> oh, man. <coughs> but yeah, so uh, anyway. Okay, that's what we're smoking. Uh, I'm smoking. <coughs> you okay? It's like uh, dying. I've, I've, had a, I've had a super gonorrhea. <laughs> Something like that. 
think I've had a something from Vegas. Who PCA man? Girl sits next to me. Next thing you know, I'm sick. <laughs> Crazy how that works. Every time a girl sits next to you, something bad happens. That's true. That's true. He did used to say at bars that he was allergic to talking to girls, so it makes sense. <laughs> that does make sense. Oh, man. By the way, uh, if you guys want to get some um, merch, we got a lot of merch these days, especially this thing right here, this coffee cup. Go to cigarguys.shop. And you can get some merch there. You cannot find Yeti cups on there. No, but Yeti, if you want to sponsor us, I got a Yeti. He's got a Yeti. I got a bag. Mine's in my car. Yeah, this is in the car. The one day he forgets it. Uh, Yeti, check us out. Love you guys. Love the new handle. 30 ounce <laughs> handle. Got a fanboy over here. <laughs> Dude, I got, the, I got the, the cup. I got another cup without a handle. I got a 25 ounce cup with a handle. I got a bag. Yeah, he's got coolers, all. shirts. <laughs> I've actually used that cooler. This is a true story. Yeti condoms. They're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> nice and insulated. Uh, <laughs> That's what protects you from the super gun. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, so what is new? Well, I think we should start with the most popular, most mainstream, but also at the same time, most loved brand. Jared is especially going to be. Very excited about this if he turns his paper over. Uh, but as you said, Perfecto is the name of the game with Padrone. Uh, it is their 60th anniversary. So they are releasing a 60th anniversary cigar, which is their first Perfecto size cigar. So it's not going to be a box press. It's going to be a traditional Perfecto size with a taper, six and a half inches, 56 ring gauge is going to be the thickest point. You know, I, I get it. A lot of people call it perfect, perfecto, but I mean, that's that's a little big. You know what I mean? Six and a half inches. Mm. I think it's... 56 it, ring gauge. Well, know. it's not about the length. The perfecto is just the shape. It's the perfect shape. I know, but the, uh, and I'm just saying the, not the size, length. though. You know, I don't know. It's a fair point. I get what you're saying. <laughs> what would you say is a more perfect length, Zach? I saw like three inches, I, I say. Yeah. Hmm. That would make sense. That would make sense. <laughs> Although it is not their first Perfecto. That's a, the 80th sorry. year. That's a box press, though. Oh, this true. Is their, this is their first true Perfecto. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know the uh, price point on this? Um, It's a great question. I couldn't find it. Interesting. But they are not officially out for release until September. They debuted in PCA. Uh, I did not take down notes of the price, but I'm sure it's going to be... You, our intern, made a huge mistake. You're, thank you. I, I was going to take the, the fall, but... If, if I had a guess, it's, Screw probably, you, Jack. it's probably going to be around like $40-ish. <clears throat> well, you got to think about it. The 50th anniversary was $50. True, but so, the 80th is not $80. But that's not the 80th anniversary. That's the number 80. Hmm. So it could be $60. If it's more than sixty dollars, I'd be upset. I think it's gonna be fifty six. Because of the ring gauge? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> mm. That's how I would charge for cigars. Based on the ring gauge. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Base of cigar, fifty dollars. <laughs> Not a bad price for the base of cigar, if uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. So um natural and Maduro wrapper on the cigar, as you know, as you would expect. Uh boxes of ten. So um, they're basically basing the size off of a traditional Cuban Salomon. So it's definitely going to be something mm. completely different from what is expected of Padron. Uh, I know Jared's very, very excited for this cigar. I, I, just, I just had to check this out. It couldn't ever be an 80th year because Padron was founded in 64, technically. I just said that it was a number 80, not an 80th year. No, what he just <laughs> said, but it threw me off because I realized that Padron. So this one website is estimating. Did I not establish that? Go ahead. Oh, never mind. There's one I would say the same might be around like thirty two dollars. I, oh, really? I, I okay. think it's gonna be more though. We'll, we'll see. Only maybe time maybe it'll be around forty. Yeah, only time will tell. We'll find out in September at the very least when it goes out to retailers. Or if they, uh, they want to send us one, of course we can try it out, do a little review. That is very true. I think. Uh, well, I think since Jared smokes so many Padrones, uh, he should not try it because you know he knows what Padrones are gonna taste like. Mm. So we'll try it for him. So send us four, all, yeah. and then we'll cut one into thirds <laughs> and share it. And then Jared can wait till September. 
It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Send us four. I'll live. At least. Maybe like six, 60, you know, like 56. I don't know, like something like that. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so very exciting. What are your thoughts, Zach? I think it's going to be a good cigar. Um, I'm hoping it's not like a $50 stick uh, for 30, 40 bucks. You know, I'd try it out. Yeah. Um, especially for like 30, I think. I mean, you're going to try it regardless. I know, I know, I know. But like, if if it's a $32 stick, I'm more likely to buy it more often, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Have one too many drinks. I'm like, ah, let me get it again. <laughs> exactly. But it, it, I think it's going to be a good stick. Absolutely. It's a good shape, so. Mark. I agree. Yeah, I think it's a good. I think I like that size. I like that shape. Uh, Padron makes great products, obviously. Um, yeah, I would say the only I, I've liked every single one they've come out with. Maybe the PC Eleven was a little off, but that one was definitely off. Did you have that one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wasn't a fan. <clears throat> well, I was asking because I didn't know he had it. I they still have it for sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be great. I've been looking forward to try something that's like new and different from Padron. Obviously, they're a brand that just you know keeps making the same stuff pretty much, which isn't a bad thing. It's a very consistent brand, but of course, it's always exciting to have like a new variation to the brand. Uh, I'm very excited about it. Yeah, the last <laughs> one was uh, the 60 ring gauge one, not including the PC 11. Yeah, so yeah, that uh, four by 60, I believe it was. That was interesting. For me, it was a little too, little too, thick, too big, but. too thick. So, better, better on the length, as Zach would say, but uh, just a little too girthy. Facts. I actually usually stick around like 50, 52, maybe 54. Yeah. <clears throat> but like, yeah, I, I, I like to stay around the 50 ring gauge unless, you know, of course, I'm smoking a Lancero. If it's a 54, <clears throat> the draw has got to be good. If it's too tight. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Next cigar we're going to talk about is the Oliva. They have unveiled a new Series V Milanio. How do you say that? Edition. Edition Anio. Or there we go. Anio. Excuse me. Edition Anio. Jesus Christ. Sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't even read it, honestly. <laughs> but so they do one of these every year pretty much now. I think the 2022, 2023, 2024. Um, this one's going to be a five and a half by 60 Vitola, as they say. I forgot. We, we got to speak like proper, you know, Vitola. 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 That sounds right. That means size. Ricotta. <laughs> so it's going to use the same components from the regular the Milano that we all know and love. The Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper with a uh, Nicaraguan binder and filler. This is going to be a limited production of 10,000 boxes so not super limited uh 10 cigars for the box um let's see five thousand boxes are going to go to the international market the ten thousand boxes are going to go to the u.s market uh oliva v as we say usually probably arguably the best oliva variant that they've made yeah yeah i agree i just had one on sunday i probably have one after this yeah am i super excited about a new size not really though Honestly, it's perfect the way it is. True. It is going to be um, around the, I believe, uh, 18 to $20 price range. So if like I'm the not same, mistaken. Virtually the same price. Um, the main line's cheaper. Seventeen fifty. Is that really? How, is I, it really? I believe so. The one I smoked. Back in the day, man. I know. I miss the good old times. Oh, what? Two years ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 20, uh, 20 around that time. Something like that. But uh, yeah, so I mean, this is a basically a different kind of variation of the Oliva V that we all know and love. Uh, <clears throat> gotta have something new for PCA. Mike Tyson. He was there. It's the only there. reason we're talking about the cigar in the first place. Because he was there? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, because he was there. You want to guess who's making it? Yeah, I'll give you like five seconds to guess who made it. <laughs> One, two... Gurkha. Wow. Shocking. Yeah. So I'm be honest, you know, we love to hate Gurkha. We love to hate them. Just like assets. We love hating on them. Gurkha has a really good marketing department. Yeah, for sure. 
their branding is on point. Their, their cigars suck. <laughs> they spend as much money as they do on marketing on the cigar itself. Literally, every 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 cigar bar I've been to, they, I mean, they all have Gurkha merchandise that they got for free. And, you know, their labels and stuff look cool. Their boxes are nice. Um, yeah, this might be a hot take, but I actually think their bands are ugly. Their main bands, like their main core yeah. stuff? I mean, they're like they're they're uh, uh, what's the word detailed? I'm not thinking of detail. Yeah, though. you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very they're extra- ex- extravagant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, for sure. Like you know, there's a lot going on. You know, so I kind of see, you know, especially with the bass, right? We stuck with a simple band that still looks elegant, um, and, and still very detailed, and still very detailed. Right. I. I, I so I think. Not simple, but minimalistic is mm-hmm. kind of like the word you're looking for. Man, um, I think it's ugly, though. I don't like the logo at all. No, no, no I'm talking about Besa. Uh, but yeah, the Gurkha. I, I, I still thought that they were going to do a complete rebranding. Maybe this is the start of it. It could be. I mean, who knows? Hmm. I just wish a better cigar company got in contact with Mike Tyson beforehand. Well, I'm not sure uh, how much Mike Tyson knows about cigars. I'm sure he smokes them. Uh, I'm sure he's not like super into the industry as far as like his knowledge goes, which isn't a big, which isn't a problem. But yeah, I'm sure that um, he knows Gurkha's a reputable brand. Gurkha's basically worldwide known. Yeah. So I'm sure he was like, okay, this is a big brand, a big name brand. Let's do it. Yeah. Doesn't so, really yeah, know anything. I guess for someone know. like him, it kind of makes he, sense. He would probably smoke a Gurkha and like it. Yeah. I mean, they you probably. Know, like, I'd imagine they probably approached him. Yeah. Just like, like, I feel like if Arnold Schwarzenegger came out with a cigar, he could do it with any brand he wanted, and it would still be huge. For example, like he could probably do it with 1102 Cigars, because you know he came here for the American Dream. 1102 Cigars, you know, we started a cigar company all about the American Dream. Mm. So it'd be a good collaboration, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he's listening. Mob, mob movies, Albanians, mob. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Hand yeah. in hand. So it makes sense for Arnold Schwarzenegger if he wanted to make a cigar, if he'd come to a small company like us. Well, you got to think about it too, you know, when it comes to boutique cigars, more passion goes into it, more, exactly. you know, it's, it's more refined. It's, it's, it's more, it's not a mainstream production. So there's more effort that goes into it, you know? Yeah. So Arnold Schwarzenegger, if you're listening, you know, hit us up. <laughs> we'll get you in contact with 1102 Cigars. It, it'll definitely beat the Gurkha. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> but this, uh, my, this Tyson 2.0 Undisputed is the cigar itself. That'll probably be the second Gurkha I'll ever smoke. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, well, yeah, and because, too, it's at the $19 price range, so that's pretty good. Uh, 6 by 54 I think it's good bang for your buck. Uh, the Churchill's only $0.90 cents more. 7 by 6 7 by 60 that's a, actually a big cigar. Um, so you're getting, I'd say it's good value. Assuming the cigar's going to taste good, that'll be a good value stick. It should uh, come we'll with see. a bite taken out of it. <laughs> like the foot should be like bit. Yeah, no, yeah, it yeah. should it should come like pre bit. Like cut like yeah. yeah, like cut with like the W blades or whatever. Yeah, like so it looks like a, a bite V mark. cut, but a curved V cut. <laughs> I don't know I don't know if he would like that. <laughs> you know, what? You don't know if he would like that? Yeah, yeah, like doesn't he not like that? Like well, the whole bite bit of ear thing? I mean he did it. I mean yeah, he did it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but like he did, I, don't, I don't think he likes like talking about it too much. I mean, you know, if he comes he on the bad podcast, about it. we won't bring it up. He felt bad about it. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mark. I mean, I feel like I offended you. I'm just a big Mike Tyson fan. Oh, is that's it, fine. He, he, Mark's about to blow up right who, now. Do you, who, who do you got? Who do you got? Mike Tyson or Jake Paul? <laughs> Let's talk about that. <clears throat> Honestly, have you read the contract? That, that was fake. Came out of that was fake. Oh, really? Like yeah. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Then no, I have not read the contract, Zach. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, I think I think Mike Tyson is going to win. I really hope he wins, man. He's old, though, you know. Yeah, but he still trains. Yeah, I mean, he's Mike Tyson, but he's old, you know. He's old. <sighs> so is Mayweather. I think when you're that he's good not, at... Mayweather's not that old. When you're that good at something, especially... Oh, look it up. How old's Mike Tyson? Especially when you're in the fighting realm. When you're, like, that good and you're at that level... He's 57. It's like riding a... How old's Mayweather? He's 43, 44. It's like riding a bike. That doesn't really leave you. I mean, he'd have to get like completely out of shape for him to be, you know, not able to perform at that level. But 47. he's, he's 47. Yeah. Okay. So 10 years. <laughs> it's a big difference. <laughs> Is it though? 
Yeah, for I, sure. I think once you get to that age, it definitely is. But uh, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. He stayed in shape. He's been training relatively consistently. I'm, I'm sure he's training more now. Uh, I mean, I think that when, it, when you compare him to Jake Paul, the power behind him is something that... Hope he bites his ear off. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. But Yeah, you never know. What are they doing? Are they boxing? or Yeah, right? They're boxing? No, they're doing an MMA fight. Yeah, they're boxing. I don't fucking know. <laughs> is it a boxing? Yeah, but yeah, that's boxing. Yeah, of course. Why would it not no. be boxing? It's you like... never know. I mean, the other Paul fought Mayweather, right? Yeah. But they both get paid, so he'll take the loss. So I guarantee this is what's going to happen to Jake. Yeah, I agree. He'll yeah. just take the loss. His first loss, though. That's pretty big. Well, the thing well, is, it's who he fought. Second loss. Who'd you lose to? Um, uh, D. Was it the last guy he did? Uh, yeah, no, I think it was the last fight. He just beat a guy. No, two fights to go. I can look it up right now. I don't know. After like, the third one, I kind of lost interest. So this one's gonna be on Netflix though for free. Yeah. So I'm wondering how I'm wondering how much Netflix. Oh, Tommy Fury. He lost Tommy Fury. Mm. Oh yeah. I wonder how much Netflix is gonna pay them. I mean, I would expect that they're expecting a lot more people to join Netflix mm. just to watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Cheaper than pay per view. Yeah, twenty bucks. Well, Mike Tyson's getting twenty million. Good amount of money. You know what Jake's getting? No, nah, I didn't say. Right, whatever. Twenty million. Let's well, assume. I guess plus they're getting paid by uh, sponsors and stuff. Well, the sponsors and um, like the venue. <clears throat> yeah. You know, like uh. Oh yeah. If it's like tickets. MGM. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, it's Tommy Fury. I feel like most people. I feel like Jared is like the fact checker. Most people think he's fought like, like way older than him, right? Because he's only like 25, 26. Yeah, yeah. He's like they're like he's building up all his wins real fast. But two, I think this is a t- arguably Mike Tyson is just an insane level of fighting. Plus, if this is like a pure exhibition match, it won't count toward his actual boxing record. Yeah. So oh, we're talking about Jake Paul. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, I I can't wait to see what happens. I think yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be entertaining. Fun. Next thing we got is a Fuente Black Pink. Hmm. It's like that a Black familiar. Panther sort of thing. Yeah, I, know, uh, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think there's a. I think there's like a lion or a tiger on the front. Hmm. It's probably a panther. Is it pink? Hmm. Well, That's... so it, it's made app. It's made in continuation, you could say, of the rare pink that was made a long time ago. Oh. So they're kind of bringing it back under a new branding, I guess. Is this a new color, or? Um, I mean, it's still pink, but oh, black okay. pink. Interesting. Oh, it's like a tiger in the background. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. It is. The branding is very cool. It looks, it looks very nice. So this was, there's not information, a lot of information on it because this was teased at the PCA. It was kind of a last minute uh, introduction. I think he just, he showcased the box. Yeah. Um, but, um, so there's not really many details on that yet. He says he's probably going to wait till next PCA to actually unveil it, uh, get some things in order. So for all the Opus X uh, fanboys out there, I'm sure they're throbbing at the mouth to get this. Next one I'm kind of excited about is Davidoff Maduro. You know, I know I haven't really smoked Davidoffs in a little while. As we get into this, you're going to lose excitement, but continue. Uh oh. Oh, because of price? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, limited release Ecuadorian Maduro Mexican binder, which I'm kind of excited about that because mm. I feel like I've been liking Mexican tobacco. Okay. Like the Casa 1910 is Mexican. Yeah. You know, it's been, I, th- I think that's been pretty good. And then Dominican fillers. I will say this, Zach, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this blend is very similar to another cigar that they already make. What, the late hour? No wonder why I'm going to like it. <laughs> Hopefully it's like the late hour, but better. So I always like the late hour. The right. problem I had with it was the construction. Yeah, same. You know, like, I yeah. guess like towards the middle to end of COVID, their construction went AWAR. That so, and like they raised the price by yeah. like $8. What is it? Twenty eight dollars? I know. Yeah, it's like more. It's like pretty much thirty. Yeah, thirty. Yeah, the the when I first started buying that, it was like twenty one. I think twenty. Yeah, I was yeah. buying those left and right. Yeah, the Robusto was like seventeen bucks. Yeah, which for Davidoff was great. Uh, and you know, so it's uh for the short Corona, forty three dollars. Robusto fifty dollars and Toro fifty four. This is uh, like Zach said, a limited release. So trying to ride the hype train. I mean, the Maduro back in the day. I actually 
never had a chance to try one because I came at the tail end of when they were running out. Uh, yeah. Missed that opportunity, but we'll see. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure we'll try one. Maybe. Honestly, I feel like all these new cigars are coming out so expensive that I think in the next two years is going to be a drawback because I think people like Davidoff and all these brands making these really expensive cigars. You're getting ahead it. of the conversation, but I like where your head's going. Oh, yeah. I like it. Oh, we're yeah. we're, we're going to go more into detail on that. All Absolutely. Right. All right. No, I appreciate that. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about where you think the industry is going to go in the yeah. next few years. Mark, okay. I appreciate I like that. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah no yeah, problem, man. Yeah, hey. That's why we keep you on. Yeah, I did that for you. It, I appreciate that. Yeah, Don't yeah, think yeah. it goes unnoticed. Uh, that, that, <laughs> hopefully, I got a raise. <laughs> We're gonna double your I'm, salary, I'm Mark. A, <laughs> sick. Screw it. Triple it. You know what? I'll sign off on that. Sick. All right. All right cool. So let me calculate how much I'm gonna make now. Don't tell the audience because it's, 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 it's rude to share your salary. Yeah, it's rude. Yeah. Zero dollars still. Is that is that math that up? You're. Wait, you don't pay anything to be on here? I have to pay to be on here. <laughs> oh, you do? Okay, never mind. I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> now we know why Alex wanted to hide salaries. <laughs> I'm, I'm paying to be on here, too. I'm not making any money from this. Oh, uh, we're free. All right, next we got Cohiba Reveals on Lancero. Sounds kind of cool. Series M. I've never actually had the Series M, so I can't really comment on it. But, um, yeah, as far as I know, I haven't seen a Lancero from the uh, New World Cohiba line. Unless I missed something, but did they have uh, the purple band one as Lancero before? Not the purple, no. That one's relatively new. That was their box press one, or maybe blue. I don't think they had a Lancero for the blue. They did make a lot of sizes for that one, though. Maybe we just uh, didn't get that over here in our end. Um, but it's going to be essentially a Nicaraguan Corojo wrapper. Um, I didn't find any more details on that, but that was kind of a quick glance for us. Very cool. Next one, we got a local local brand. Quick shout out. Quick Figured shout I'd out. throw this one in there. Yep. Quick shout out to Hustlers. The Palestine reveals a Connecticut in a Corona Gorda known as Justice. Named after his son. It's his wife. Justice? I've been told. Yes. Oh, very cool. Um, Jared and I smoked this cigar, and we actually smoked their, um, I believe, Toro or Robusto of the Connecticut a while back. I, I actually liked it. It's more of a medium plus Connecticut. Yeah. So the Connecticut's are good. A little more exciting. You've had a Connecticut from them? Yeah. I think it's pretty good. I had it when they first came out. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, they make good stuff. I mean, Pastani is... I actually really like this stuff, and I think it's reasonably priced. Uh, this one's going to be Corona Gorda, 5.5 by 46. Um, yeah, definitely check those guys out. They got great cigars. Cool um, people. They're doing a lot. I think we talked about this before. They're They're increasing their production quite a bit, so... All right, next up we got Warped Island of the Crocodile, Ecuador, now and Habano. If they did Island of the Alligator, this would be a huge <laughs> hit in Florida. But they decided not to do that. We're we'll saving have, we'll that for the collaboration with them. I was, I was gonna say we'll have a whole series called Everglades. It will just be mm. based off animals. Yeah, yeah, one like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> or panther. Dude, we have alligator. a we have a More bobcat. Alligators. We have a huge bobcat in our neighborhood now. I know. I saw a video of it. Yo, yeah, mom said it to you. Yeah, it's crazy. I want to pet that thing. You got to find out where like it sleeps at night and try to take a few photos of it. My mom took a video. I'm just I'm just gonna start buying like real cheap like pork and like putting it out. I'm starting to realize Jared's like brain recognition is a little delayed today. What's going on over there? I'm just trying to like consume these notes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't eat paper, Jared. You can't eat paper. Yeah. I mean, you kind of could. <laughs> anyway, warped island of the crocodile, Ecuadorian Habano, two thousand. Another Corona Gorda size. Interesting. Mm. It is a popular size. Uh, I think it's been overlooked for a while, but uh, for what I gathered at PCA, a lot of um, these brands are putting out the the smaller sizes. Uh, Michael Herklotz from, um, God, what's that brand? Ferro Tego. Tego. Uh, he's putting out a lot of extensions from their line that are the thinner ring gauges. As In his his words, the, uh, the true aficionados would appreciate this more. They don't sell as well as a Robusto or Toro, but uh, the experience is much better, in our opinion. Uh, continue, Jack. Yeah, so it's going to be priced at 13 bucks. 
uh for the gordo and then they are also going to have a toro which is six by 52 it's going to be 14 dollars um and they're both going to be packaged in 15 count boxes mm, that's yeah. um next cigar we got on the list is the el septimo culinary arts collection mm. so there's a lot of cigars here uh to go down um and the reason i wanted to talk about this is because it's kind of a different approach from their main line uh all their main stuff is of a much darker wrapper and these cigars are almost like the connecticut shade color and i will say the biggest difference is the price i mean that's true this, is, that. cl- this is closer to their original art collections that they released um so we've got um some different sizes the five and a, uh, excuse me the five by 54 is nine dollars the six by 46 is 12 Six by fifty-two is fifteen, and the six by sixty is eighteen. So we get a little break on the price there. For our viewers, can you name them as you go down the list? I guess so. Um, <laughs> we have the El Septimo. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. They're, they're very um, ethnic names, should we say? Uh, very. Uh, I can't pronounce how. <laughs> the Rioja, the the the, the, the Nigori, the Toscana. That's the I heard that one. one before, yeah. And the Bordeaux. 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 <laughs> uh, so a box of 20. Reasonably priced for what we're used to. Uh, I'm interested to know the quality. Very interested to know the quality because we've talked about this before. Uh, I don't think that they're... Well, I don't think the flavor is all there. Maybe, quality the, maybe is okay. the quality is the same. They just spent less money on the wrapper and the box. <laughs> Uh, I guarantee they spent the same amount of money making this one as they did making the hundred dollar one. Took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, I can well. guarantee that. It's all about marketing in this industry. Uh, for the most part, for the most part, there are cigars that cost fifty dollars to make, and they're sold for a hundred dollars. Saka, something like that. I don't know. It's, it's fifty. It's something crazy. It's it's like yeah, the crazy unicorn. Cost. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. The unicorn I think costs like forty something. It's something. It's almost fifty to make. Why? I don't know. It, the 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 leaves they use are part of it. Um, the shape. The shape is a very very hard shape to roll. Saka rolls them all himself too. Yeah. So hey, hey. that's another reason why it's very limited. Um, yeah, I, I, I still well, never had this. His, 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 <laughs> yeah, he rolls all those cigars himself. Dang, he's being put to work. <laughs> I mean, his whole thing was like with like for the unicorn was to make like. A really expensive cigar. What would it take to make a really expensive cigar? Not just, you know, slapping a band on it and saying it's expensive. Like, how expensive can I make yeah. this cigar for? You know? Right. That's that's wild. I really know he made them. That's pretty cool. Now I kind of want to buy one. Yeah. So, really, it's not just marketing that is the reason for the cost or for the retail price. It's the actual cost that goes into it is pretty insane. Very um, cool. Yeah. I mean, you got cigars like... Um, out of Bay and Alfonso, the process is just very extensive, so that's why they charge more. Of yeah, course, marketing is part of it too, but I mean, they the what goes into producing the cigars is more than more than average, we could say. Does uh, Corona have them in stock? Yeah, they should. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah, I know a few places that do. So right, well, Jerry wants one now. <laughs> definitely gotta try it. I know that um, I, they should have some. I know for a fact that Blend and Barrel in Sanford has the. The new ones that they released, the Sober Mesa, and I think they still have the uh, Mikierda, the black label, too. Oh, yeah. You should probably get the black label one. Those are 120 though. Damn. But I think the overall prices went up anyway. And I'll just have to smoke it, like, really slow. Is yeah. that possible? Gonna have to <sighs> with this one. I will say, I smoked with Jared the other day, and he was smoking slow. Hmm. What happened? Why'd you tell him? I finished the cigar before he did, which is... He's embarrassed, dude. Why'd you say that? God. You, yeah. could, you could have just said it was on purpose. Let cut that out. <laughs> so you're smoking slow, huh? Not right now, but... <laughs> Obviously not right now. Now, this one's a little drier, so I'm trying to take the time. Mm. <laughs> so you're, sm- you're saying that's slow for you? Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Hmm. Another big celebration on the list. LFD. La Florida Dominicana. 30th anniversary. Wow. 30 years. 
a little older than me. It's a box press cigar, six and a half inches long, 58 ring gauge. So it's again with a higher ring gauge. I think we've been seeing a lot more higher ring gauges come out. Um, yeah. And I don't know if it's because a lot more people actually smoke higher ring gauges. So they're kind of just trying to flood the market. That's for sure what it is. There is definitely a big market for the 60 ring gauge area. Because I think it's for like casual smokers. They see a bigger cigar. They think they just naturally think it's better. Well, that or maybe it's more with the money. Like, oh, you know, yeah. might as well get a bigger one. Yeah, I guess more bang for your buck. But yeah. You're losing a lot of flavor like that. True. But, you know, what do they know? Because there's more casual smokers than hardcore smokers. For sure. I'd say we're in the middle. Middle leaning towards aficionado. Or, we're, 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 we're like the people yourself. we're aficionado but not snob yeah, Let's we're, say that. we're like the people that are like eat at mcdonald's but then we'll also like enjoy a nice steak dinner you know yeah. what i mean yeah for sure for sure yeah exactly it's like some of us might get the fish fillet with extra tartar sauce <laughs> damn straight <laughs> uh it's made with a um ecuadorian grown from sumatra that's the wrapper uh the binder is a uh, from the Dominican town of Cotio, Cotui, Cotua, something like that. So, uh, darker cigar. It's a dark Ecuadorian wrapper. Very cool. So, something new from LFD. La Aurora come out with something new? Uh, we, we, real quick. Um, oh. So, Sancho Panza was bought. The New World Sancho Panza. Another brand that Scandinavian tobacco company, tobacco group has acquired. Uh, still waiting to hear back from you guys about uh, sending us those cigars, but you know, I guess I'll reach out again. Uh, <laughs> they reached out to us to send us some, but uh, I don't know where that happened. I don't know what happened to that. But real quick, um, basically they went through a redesign once they acquired it, and Matt Booth was uh, one of the guys responsible for that redesign. So they changed the label a little bit, uh, got a bunch of new lines that they're pushing out. So um, there's a ton of stuff on that. You can go look it up. Go ahead, Zach, or Mark. Oh, uh, Lock. Aurora came out of the Casa de Auroras. Casa Doras. Casa Doras. So, uh, really? well, yeah, basically, La Aurora is a pretty mid tier to kind of expensive. They, on they, they have a couple of expensive ones for sure. This is going to be much more budget friendly. And, yep. That's, yep. <laughs> is that what you're going to say? I just think that's exactly where the cigar industry is going to start heading pretty soon. But yeah, yeah. No, as low as four dollars and fifty cents per cigar. Which, that is very cheap. Low. That's that's really low. The Robustos, uh, five inches, fifty ring gauge, um, four dollars and fifty cents. Then the Toro is going to be four seventy five. Gordo six by sixty, six dollars and fifty cents. Hmm. I'm sure it's going to be good too. Uh, yeah. I haven't tried it yet, but yeah, it might be my new go to. I've been smoking the JFR a lot. So. Mm, the All, right, All right, let's finish off Crown Heads. Okay. And then we can get Mark talking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Crown Heads. What, you want to talk, Jared? No, I'm just trying to read the notes here. Um, he doesn't have his reading glasses on. He is colorblind, too, so I don't know about the contrast on the paper. <laughs> uh, he, he's used to reading code also, not English. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. He's like, yeah, there's, does there's no come- colors on here. There's no... There's no syntax highlighting. Does this compile? <laughs> <laughs> that was the hardest part when I had to do an AP exam for computer science. Um, I had to handwrite code. Yeah. Oh, and it's really? like, oh, yeah, uh, I passed it. I don't know how. But, uh, yeah, without having, like, the the different colors for the different syntax and everything, it's difficult. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, real quick. Two different cigars from Crown Heads, same branding. So the Coronetta... Two different cigars, two different factories. The Habano version is made in Nicaragua at the NAXA factory. I thought that was a NASCAR for a second. <laughs> NASCAR factory in Daytona Beach, Florida. And the Maduro is produced by uh, the Carrillo at by the Carrillo family, Paris Carrillo family, excuse me, at the Casa Carrillo factory in the Dominican Republic. So two different factories, two different countries. Uh, the Habano is going to be. An Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, and Nicaraguan fillers grown in Esteli, uh, Condega, and, and Jalapa. While the Maduro is going to be a dark Mexican San Andreas wrapper, Ecuadorian Connecticut binder, and the filler is going to be from the Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, and Pennsylvania. 
another trend we're seeing a lot is the use of Pennsylvania tobacco in the filler. Uh, five five fifty two is going to be twelve ninety five, very good price. And the uh, Duke, which is the five and a half by fifty four, will be thirteen ninety five. And the Baron, which is a six by fifty six, will be fourteen dollars and ninety five cents. Very cool. Retail price, of course. Check your local retailers for um, you know the actual price. Yep. Sorry, Canada. <laughs> Rip Canada. It's gonna be like forty dollars. So those are um, the. I think it's about t- uh, ten or eleven brands that we wanted to showcase things that uh we saw first things that we were you know more excited about things that we wanted to talk about um but we're going to get into some conversation that mark's especially excited about which is where we see the market going in the next few years predictions that we have based red. on what we've been seeing red hopefully not red mark's going red unless you're talking about buy low sell high that's always good Mark is like the modern day Notre Dame, but it comes to cigars. So we were to take some time to you know listen to Mark and feel it out. And I just think these brands like Davidoff and uh-huh. these other like yeah yeah well known brands. Okay, they're coming out with these um, cigars that cigars, are like yeah. pretty high in price. Price, yeah, high. And I think they're investing too much money in these high price cigars. Money. One second, can we stop? Oh, sorry. Thank you, sir. I-, I think they're investing like too much money into these high price cigars. I think within the next two years. Um. They're, they're just going to see their sales not increase the way they want it to increase, and they're going to go back to making cheaper cigars. You got to think about it, too. Um, it's a volume game. At the end of the day, the the biggest issue with this is volume. Well, and I, I think what these big companies are doing right now, too, is like um, they get paid when a retailer buys their cigars, right? So if I'm a cigar company that has bought in every Davinoff that you've gotten out right let's just say and then i release three more at a high oh let's just say 60 dollars a stick well they're buying them for 30 bucks a stick so they're making more money off the bat and they at the end of the day they don't care if they you know hmm. they sell a limited amount but plus also it's dabbing off where you know oh hey we're coming out with the maduro again limited release limited release and that's why they keep doing these limited releases at such a high price you know because they're doing ten thousand boxes mm-hmm Right, but do the this, math. Yeah, thirty bucks a steak, however many, uh, or how much money they're making. Was that three hundred grand for selling them all? Yeah, and that's just off the rip. They're making it. You know, as soon as they're done, as soon as they release it, they make three hundred grand. Hmm. And yeah, then sure. at the end of the day, you know, it's it's the cigar lounges that are stuck with, uh, you know, hmm. all these high priced cigars and no one's buying. I mean, even uh, restaurant, the liquor industry was like that for a little while. I mean, it kind of still is. We're like. Uh, if you want um, uh, Buffalo Trace, you have to buy all of their products, you know, and they did that just so they could make more money. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they wouldn't sell any of their other products. That includes buying Fireball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Fireball or whatever bottom shelf, you know, liquor they had. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then imagine having to get Blanton's. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 I don't think it's going to last. I, I'm with Mark. I don't think it's going to last. I think this is just their money grab. Uh, you'll see a lot of smaller cigar, smaller but like popular cigar brands sell out, hmm. um, and then that'll be the end of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, and I, I think like limited releases like this isn't really like that big of a deal to me, right? Because mm-hmm. like they're limited, like all right, the year of the whatever. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. It's unique. Yeah. So pe- of course people are going to want to get that no well, matter the price. I'll piggyback off that. I think that there's too many limited releases exactly coming out all the time so the hype is dying down like everything's a limited release now so it's like okay whatever now it's basically just releasing a new size of your core line base of cigar limited release make sure you go get it now before they sell out okay right now right now right now sold out (laughs) damn (laughs) that was quick and and you always see it like one per customer and then it'll be on the chef for another month and then it's like you buy however many you want Mm -hmm. and then that one guy buys 20 (laughs) yeah but (laughs) Well, yeah, just, just like the PC Eleven. I mean, that was that was one per customer because I thought it was going to sell out, and true, it's still on the shelf. I mean, and they only made like nine hundred of those. Yeah, they're, they're still on the shelf. Granted, it's um, less accessible. True. So, I mean, that's part of the reason. But yeah, you would think that with such a limited amount, they would go out like that because people would be going to like you know the website and buying them. Because so. I mean, let's face it. I mean, you smoke a cigar now. Limited release. Sure, you'd never smoke it again, but are you going to remember what that cigar tasted like three years down the line? 
No, I mean, I'm sure if it's really good, you'll remember the experience. I mean, there's cigars I smoked that I remember, and I'm like, I really loved it. I talk about it to this day. Yeah, but how, but, many, how many limited releases are you going to remember? No, you're, you're exactly right. Um, I don't, of course, remember all of them. But uh, for an example, I mean, Zach and I were both buying these limited release Davidoffs, the Vault Series, like every time they came out. And eventually it just got to the point where, number one, they weren't as high quality as they w- were. But then it was like every month was a new vault release. So it was like, it was just yeah, getting old. Point? Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, so I think Davidoff, I can see their sales not increasing the way they wanted to. Yeah, Pretty I think. Um, I also think their name is kind of running dry. True. I yeah. think, um, well, that's another company where, you know, if they put more money, take it from marketing and put it into their product, maybe it would be better. Maybe. I don't know. What do I know? But another thing with when it comes to these like one offs and these collaborations, like the Mike Tyson, for example, um, that's becoming more popular too. doing these one offs, these collaborations with celebrities and stuff. Um, I don't know if there's that much hype behind it right now. Um, but I think that that might be a short lived concept. I think there's going to, we're going to see less of that in the coming years. Yeah. It might, might still get a few more. And then I think that's going to die down because again, it's like, there's so many different ones. You kind of lose sight of it. Yeah. Yeah. And the Mike Tyson one is cool, but like, you you never really hear about him smoking cigars like that either. True. Yeah. That is odd. I guess like, you know, like you said, Arnold Schwarzenegger. If Arnold Schwarzenegger came out with like his own cigar, they could put that everywhere. Yeah. And everyone would be like, oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Exactly. Or even Sylvester Stallone, like if he made a cigar. Yeah. And not even having like his own brand, he could just come out with a limited release like that. Those limited releases are cool. But I think if you're just doing like a Nicaragua or like a, you're just doing a Maduro limited release, it's almost like, what's the point? Yeah. That's the way I see it. I think too, I mean, they're relying on their, their big fans. Uh, all these different companies, especially like Steve Saka, they have huge fans that will buy pretty much anything that comes out. Um, actually, that's one I forgot to put on the list. He came out with a cool little sampler pack, including in Candela, which I thought was shocking. Yeah, but, that's cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with you, Mark, on your perception. But only time will tell. Only time will tell. We'll see what happens to the market. I mean, too, on top of that, a lot of new brands every every year. Yep. Everyone's got a cigar now, including us. Look at us. We're going to have to watch this episode two years from now to see, like, are your predictions correct? I think they will be. Mark Adamas. Well, we're already starting to see some brands do it. Like, for example, Septimo. I mean, they came out of the gate swinging with these heavy hitter cigars that are like $100, $80, $70. And I guarantee what happened was is that they weren't selling as much as they wanted to. So now they're coming out with these cheaper cigars. Mm. You know, we had Aganor Salif on here telling us that the JFR was our best-selling cigar. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of these companies are going to start to realize that, you know, everyday smokers don't want to spend $40 on a cigar. True. Oh, man. I know Zach's itching to get out of here. <laughs> you feeling good? Yeah. Okay. Uh oh. Real quick, made a video on this, but I want to talk about it on the podcast All in right. case you don't follow our TikTok. Uh, I'm going to put some pictures up here. Where are we at? 48? Okay. 48, 48. Uh, we're going to talk about something I saw on Facebook that okay. I shared with the group uh, already. Um, someone posted a picture, insert a picture here, of two Cuban <laughs> Partagas cigars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the discussion was if these cigars were safe to smoke. And if you look at this picture, uh, if you're not watching um, the video, go to YouTube or Spotify and look at the video. Go to, you know, this timestamp and uh, just look at this picture. I mean, this is absolutely covered in what arguably is mold. Plume is mold, though. That's what people don't understand. Plume is mold. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but there's a there's a difference. Like, I mean, right? the plume you can wipe off, but this is just way too much. Yeah, like like blue cheese is molded cheese, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But if you see mold on top of your blue cheese, you right. can't eat it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you just cut it out, though? I mean, you can, but, like, you shouldn't because you don't right. know. If it's growing there, you don't know where else it grew. And that's the argument here is if you see any sign of mold in your cigar, should you smoke it? Yeah, I think if it's a little white on the outside, 
yeah, wipe it off you know if it's on the foot definitely don't smoke it if it's that bad yeah if it's if it's as bad as this picture um and and some people said that like as long as it's on the foot it doesn't matter well if it's, as long as, as it's not on the foot. Or, i'm sorry yeah if it's if it's not on the foot it, you could smoke it whatever um this is just how insane. bad this is is like like you don't know where else it got into the cigar you know what i mean like it, it could be filled with mold yeah it just didn't reach the foot yeah and then you go start smoking it and next thing you know you're in the hospital because like you got some yeah illness yeah and this guy said that his uh humidity was at 75 percent, which he believes was okay yeah a little too high i'm gonna tell you right now 75 percent is not ideal um i would say max 72 uh Preferably, I would say you want to go between 65 and 70 percent, uh, especially with Cu- with Cubans. He was way too high. He's got to go 65 with uh, Cuban cigars. So, what did you do with those cigars? Me, I didn't do anything with the cigars because they're not my cigars. Oh, okay. I want to say maybe hand them out to somebody. Or- <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it again. Jared is like slow on processing information today. <laughs> yeah, I I wonder if he smoked them though. I, so, how <laughs> much is that Davidoff Maduro? <laughs> 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 that's funny uh i went through uh the first couple comments i saw one guy said 75 percent humidity is ideal if i'm not mistaken he is mistaken um how old are the cigars who knows more than likely that's plume and that's back into the discussion of oh plume's okay that's mold guys uh plume which is typically shown on aged cigars plume is not dangerous which uh you don't have to have poom on a cigar to make it age. You know? No, I most uh, aged cigars don't have. Plume. I've had cigars aged fifteen years with not a hint of anything on the wrapper. Yeah, and I've had cigars aged fifteen weeks. <laughs> Nothing, you know. Um, and again, next guy said if it wasn't on the foot, let her rip, smoke them. Yeah, um, which that, that th- one might have been a joke though. All maybe. All these guys, or all these comments, I don't know if they were serious or not, but these definitive statements are definitely not true. And um, if anything, they're a matter of opinion. Um, I would argue that it's just fake news. So, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Vote on the poll. Uh, would you smoke this or not? I thought I was joking when he said 75%, so I just stopped reading after that. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Kind of like when I posted the obviously fake Cuban. And everyone got mad. <laughs> How is that fake Cuban? It's actually really good. I'm going to be honest with you. It's a really good Dominican cigar. Very nice. Really good copy. I thought it was Cuban. Oh, my God. My bad is Cuban. But that's it for this episode. So I wanted to uh, thank you guys for tuning in and getting the insight on what's new here in the cigar industry. Until then, see you next time. See ya. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below. And now, a final word from our sponsors.